me, if you will. Uh, obviously, I know that I sound like Jay, but I'm not Pastor Jay. Uh, but he, uh, most of you know, is in Tennessee delivering Emily to her first year of college. And then Chris is out, so I'm the third stringer. So you'll have to put up with me this morning. But we're going to let the ladies go ahead and get us started in our first couple of songs. And so join us as we sing. Talks with me along life's narrow way. 
joy through the ages to sing of his love for me. Right, you may be seated. Thank you for singing that. Welcome to Lindell Baptist Church. It's good to have some visitors with us today. If you haven't got around to meet the group over here of Tony's family and the couple in the back and Vicki and Charlie we met up here, be sure to greet them after church. And, um, and so tonight we will be meeting at 6 o'clock. And if you don't normally come on, on Sunday evening, let me tell you what's normally happening around here. All of the kids are involved in Awanas. And so that's a, a big children's program, and the kids love it, and so do the parents. And so, and while that's going on with the kids and the workers, uh, the rest of us this this semester of what we call Legacy Night, we're meeting in the um, Coons Chapel across the hallway there, and we assemble John and Romans portions of Scripture. And currently, we're going through. Uh, we just shipped about thirty-five thousand. Half of those were English, John and Romans, and half were Spanish. And those will get sent to missionaries uh, out of the country that can use those to hand out as they canvas areas. And so tonight, uh, we'll be stapling those signatures together. Uh, there'll be some collating. So we put the covers on them. We send them over to the other room, uh, that, and, and no way trims them. Uh, so and then we box them and send them back to the uh, BLMF, who then distributes them to the missionaries that can use them. And so if you don't normally come, we encourage you to come be a part of that tonight. And then also on Wednesday nights, if you uh, don't normally attend on Wednesday night, we have our different groups. You see the, the banners here in the auditorium. The praying group will be meeting Wednesday night. The sending group meets. The welcoming group has some things going on. Be sure to see Cameron or Jerrica if you want to find out more about that. And then we have the, the going group. And that seems to be our biggest group. They're meeting downstairs. They're getting prepared for the harvest festival that uh, will be coming up in October so they're already planning for that you can be a part of that and then there's the learning group where we're learning about missions and, and how we could be a part in that uh, here locally and so uh, I encourage you to do that and so we'll we'll save the rest of our announcements until the end of the service so they'll be fresh in your mind we've got several signups uh, out on the bulletin board that we'll cover at the end of the service so stand with us again and we'll bring back the ladies and Sing along.
seated. Uh, thank you, ladies. Thank you, Cameron. Good to have Cameron back. But Mary's a great substitute when he's gone. Thank you for participating in that. Okay, our speaker today is none other than Brother Noe Estrada. How many knew his last name? Okay, you're well known around here, Noe. All right, so he's preached for us before, and I told him don't say anything bad about me when he comes. You come, brother, and um, preach to us. He's been a, a great blessing to our church. Thank you, brother. Good morning to everyone. Uh, this morning, one of our brothers is going to, help to be helping us, uh, Brother Nolan, if you want to help us this, this morning. He's going to help us to get started with this, ser uh, with this uh, service. Yeah, grab this one. All right. Titus. Chapter 2, verses 11 to 15. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation have a, hath appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worthy lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God that our Savior Jesus Christ who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purity and to himself and peculiar, peculiar people zealous of God works. These things speak and exhort and re rebuke with all authority let no man despise thee. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Please help Brother Noe as he brings the message today. Just fill him with the Holy Ghost that he may be able to uh, put a burden in our hearts for what we should do for you. Amen. All right. Thank you, brother. Good morning, everyone. I hope you had a great week. Uh, this morning, we're here to be listening to the Word of God. Um, we're, be, we're going to be talking about the grace of God this morning. Now, every single time that I come up here, I feel like my voice goes away. I try to, you know, to stay <laughs> together, but the voice goes away. But please bear with me. This morning, we're going to be talking about grace. You, I know that you have heard before that we are saved by grace. We're not un under the law. We're saved by grace. But if I ask you this morning, do you understand what grace means? Do you know what that means? If someone comes to you this morning and asks you, hey, what's grace? Can you explain? Now, let me ask you another question. How does grace apply to you? What grace, what's the result of, of grace in your life? It's another question. Those are one of the questions that we are going to be answering this morning. But first of all, I want to explain about, about grace. It's, undeserved, it's the undeserved gift of the divine favor of God for the salvation of sinners. The Bible, in 1 Peter 5.10, you don't have to go there, but the Bible calls God the God of all grace. If he's the God of all grace, we have to pay attention to this word, which is grace. God is the source of all grace. He's the one that provides it to us. Now, there's nothing you can do to buy it. There's nothing you can do. There's no works that you can do to obtain it. There's nothing that we put on our side to get it. It, it, the, it says, the definition says, it's undeserved gift of God. Now, we're going to learn how to understand this word. Why is it important to understand it? If you have kids, 
you have to teach them. If you go out and start sharing the gospel, you're going to come and you're going to share about grace. There's going to be always a time, if you're a Christian, there's going to be always a time that you have to come across explaining about grace. Let's go to Genesis. Go with me to Genesis chapter 321. The first question is, where did grace start in the Bible? Genesis 321. The Bible says also for Adam and his wife, the Lord God made tunics of skin and clothed them. What happened here? They had disobeyed, but God didn't kill them right away. He decided to clothe them with skins. Those skins had to come from somewhere, from an animal. We know that something died in order for Adam, Adam and Eve to be covered, to be clothed. Now, we can, we can see that the first uh, physical dead should have been the man and his wife, but it was an animal, a shadow of re the reality that God will someday kill a substitute to redeem sinners. That's a way of pointing to what Christ was going to do on the cross. For you and I, God always providing. See, there is nothing else outside of that. It's always God providing. We cannot do it ourselves. What Adam and Eve did after they sinned, they went and hide. They were trying to hide from God. And God was looking for, for them. And he was, Adam, where are you? And you and I are the same way. When we are in sin, we try to hide. When we commit sin, we try to hide it from, some, somewhere else, from somebody else. But God, by his grace, is always trying to reach out to you. It started in Genesis. It was not applied to the fallen angels. It was not applied to them. It was applied to men, to you and I. You and I they are the only ones that have got grace, not the fallen angels. We find it here in, the, in Genesis 3.21. Now, how does grace apply to you? Have you asked or have you answered that question before? If your kid comes and asks you, hey, how, how does grace apply to me? Why is it so important to know? When we recognize your falling, our falling nature and know that, you, that we cannot do anything to please God, we cannot do any works to please God without, uh, with our own works, if it's not through Jesus Christ, we cannot please God. We have to give God the lordship. You, we have to give Jesus Christ the lordship of our lives. See, if you try to do good things, if we come to church, which is good. We come to learn, to learn to listen to the voice of God, not the voice of men standing back here. We come and listen to the word of God. If you come, that's good. If you do good things, that's good. But if you have not given your life to Jesus Christ, there's nothing you can do to please God. And this morning, my friend, my, what I want uh, to, to share with you is that if you don't know how grace applies to you, let me tell you that it applies to you by recognizing that you cannot do anything to please God. That's the, the servant gift that God gave us, his son, our Lord Jesus Christ, to come to him. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 1. Go with me to Ephesians chapter 1. And just like I told you, sometimes I feel like my voice goes away, but <laughs> please bear with me. Now, Ephesians uh, chapter 1. Let's go to verse 7. In him, 
In who? In Jesus Christ. In him. We have redemption through his blood. The forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. See, it has been through uh, Jesus Christ, but it's by his grace. By that, by the undeserved gift that God gave us. And now this morning, if you're here and you have not received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, let me tell you that the grace has not been applied to your life. Is it important to have grace applied to your life? Yes. Because that's the only way that you're going to receive eternal life. Not by works, not by your own sacrifice, it's by the only sacrifice that Jesus Christ did on the cross. By recognizing what he did for you and for I, and by receiving his lordship, which means that he's the, the Lord, he's the owner, not you anymore. Let's go to, the, to Ephesians chapter 2, chapter 2, verse 8. Okay, we have um, chapter 2, verse 8. And let's go to read uh, chapter eight. 8. It says, For by grace you have been saved. For by grace you have been saved. Through faith, and that is not of yourself. See, it's not even your, yourself. Where, where does it come from? It is the gift of God. Not of works, lest anyone shall boast, boast, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So what I was saying earlier, if you, come, if you come to church, if you do good things, but if it's not through Jesus Christ, there's nothing that you are doing to please God. It has to be through Jesus Christ. It's a new creature that has been created in Jesus Christ. See, grace is giving you the opportunity to let you know that you can be saved by his, by his, his sacrifice on the cross. Verse 8 says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that's not of yourself, it is it's a gift of God. When you recognize what he did on the cross, you, you receive him as the Lord of your life. You surrender your life to him. That's when grace is applied to you. Is it important? Yes, my friends, it is important. Because if we don't have the understanding of, of grace, how are you going to understand what he did for you on the cross? Remember, it's a gift that you didn't do anything to receive it. Back in Genesis, there was an animal that had to die. For them, skin to be clothing Adam and Eve. Now, it was pointing on to what Jesus Christ was going to do on the cross. Now, the Bible says here that it's by grace, by him, not by works. And the result is that he has made us his workmanship created in Christ Jesus. When, the, when grace is applied to you, you have been created in Jesus Christ. And see, that's where a lot of people get confused nowadays. Nowadays, you go outside and people start saying, oh, I'm saved. Why? Because I received Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior when I was back in the 20 years ago, 10 years ago. Then I'm saved. I can do whatever I want because I have been saved and the, the wage of sin is not going to apply on me because I have received Jesus Christ. A lot of people get, get deceived. See, grace does not give you, it does not allow you to sin. And that's another question that we're going to be answering this morning. Does grace allow you to sin? Have you heard before saying like, 
Oh, we don't live by, by the law anymore. We're under the grace. But do you, do you understand what that means? Does that allow you to sin? By saying everybody else does it. Listen, God is always trying to keep us away from sin. That's his grace. He does not allow you or allow me to sin. We have to keep battling against our own sin. See, grace is not a license to sin. If you understand that grace is the gift that God gave you on the cross and Jesus Christ had to pay for what you and I had to pay. If you understand that concept, if you understand that grace, you are going to do as much as you can to keep to stay away from sin. If you if you truly have received grace, you are going to walk away from sin. That's what the Bible teaches us. It's not what the man is teaching you. It's, the, it's what the Bible teaches us. And it's not to you only. It's to myself as well. I have to keep walking away from sin. I have to deny myself and follow Christ. That's grace. See, let me share something real quick with you. Real, something real quick. When, I, when the Lord found me, I was not doing good things at all. I was not even, I was all against Jesus Christ. It has been almost 10 years now. And a lot of people that knew me in the past, a lot of them knew me, what I was doing, and they were like, you're going to be back. But by his grace, he has kept me. Still battling against sin. But by, by his grace, he has kept me and he has kept you if you have received Jesus Christ. And there's a, a man that the last week when I went to the restaurant, I didn't see him for many years. And I walked in, and he saw me, and he was like, hey. And I walked, and I, and I said hi to him. And he said, listen, it has been a long time. And I have been looking for God. I have been looking, like God has put the desire in me. And he said, I want to go to the, to the church with, with you. Listen, it's not me, it's not being perfect, it was the grace of God shining onto him, giving him the opportunity to come and listen to him. That is grace. And if you are here this morning, it's because God is giving you the opportunity to come and learn about his grace and to apply it to your life. Now, if you say that you have received grace, but if you keep sinning, why? Because you are under grace? You are have been deceived. You are deceiving yourself. That's what the Bible teaches us, and we're going to go there. And listen, it's not because I want to uh, show myself perfect. It's because the Bible teaches us, not to you, it's to myself as well, just like I mentioned before. Does grace allow you to sin? No. According to the Bible, no. There's no way. Let's go to Romans. Let's go to Romans 5.20. Let's go, to, uh, go with me to Romans 5.20, please. All right, we have it there. Bible says, moreover, the law entered that the, of, that the offense might be abound. Oh, you see? But where the sin abounded, grace abounded much more. His grace is greater. Now, let me read something real quick here about the law. The law, the presence of the law caused men 
men's sin to increase. Why? This, uh, this made men more aware of their own sin sinfulness. Letting, no letting men know that they were sinners. When the law came was to show you and to show me what is sin. And the wage of sin is dead, but his grace is greater. The, the sin abounded, but the Bible says that the grace abounded much more. So the law is not to come for eternal life because nobody has been able to do that. It always has been by grace. The law has been given to you and I and it has been given in the past for men to know what is sin. To obey God and to appoint unto Jesus Christ. Now, let's go to Romans uh, chapter 6. Romans chapter 6, we have it right, right there. Chapter 6, verse 1. The question was, does grace allow you to sin? Bible says in chapter 6, verse 1, What shall we say then? Shall we continue, continue in sin that grace might abound? What, what, what shall we say then? Is grace allowing you to keep sinning? If you understand the true meaning of grace, let's go to verse 2. Certainly not. How shall we who died to sin live in any longer in it? See, the law was given to you and I to understand and to know that we were sinners. But his grace came and he, wa and he was greater by knowing that we cannot do anything to please God and just looking up to Jesus and receiving his gift, that was grace. And so that was great. And it covered all of the sin. But now that you have received it, it says that you cannot keep on sinning. Now, Lindell Baptist Church, in general, every single one that is here this morning, when, when grace is preached to you, it's not to give you or to give me a license, a license to keep it sinning. The Bible says that we have to, if we have to die, if we have died to sin, how can we live in it? Do we battle with sin? Yes, we do. First John chapter 1, 8 says that if we say that we don't have no sin, we are liars. But verse 9, uh, if you want to read it later at home, it says that he is faithful. That if we confess our sins, he's faithful. He's, he's going to forgive us and he's going to cleanse us from sin. So yes, we do battle. As Christians, we do battle. After we have received grace, yes, we do battle with sin, but we don't live in it. If you truly know grace, you are going to do as much as you can to stay away from sin. Why? Because you understand that grace was the free gift, the undeserved gift that God gave you through Jesus Christ on the cross. And he suffered for you and I. And if you have recognized him as Lord and Savior, you are going to do as much as you can to stay away from sin. Why? Because it's not you anymore. It's Jesus Christ's lordship in your life. See, that is grace. It's not to, keep, to go out there and say like, oh, every single one is doing it. No, we have to change. The world is changing. We have to adapt the church onto the new era. That's a lie. The Bible has been the same always. God has been always the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's not going to change. And the Bible calls, us, calls God, and we said it before, it calls God the God of all grace. And he does not change. Now, we, have, we know that grace does not allow us, allow us to sin. Grace does, grace does, let me slow down, I'm sorry. Let, let's, grace does something in your life. By grace, 
God wants you to be a new creature. See, it's not living in sin anymore. It's not trying to, to say that everybody else does it, so you are going to do it. It's not trying to hide your sins. Grace is something greater. It's God telling you to be a new creature through Jesus Christ. We read earlier about Ephesians chapter 1, and we're going to go, chapter 2, I'm sorry. We're going to go back to Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. And we're going to read verse 8 and 9. We read it before, we're going to read it again. For by grace you have been saved through the faith in God, not of, that not of yourself. It is in the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship, here is the thing, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should, should walk in them. So what grace does, lets you know what, what he did for you on the cross. And by receiving Jesus Christ, you become a new creature. A new creature away from sin. Like it says, created in Jesus Christ for what? For good works. So now the good works that you do is because you do them through Jesus Christ. You don't do them for salvation. You don't do it to try to, to earn the, the favor of God. You do it because you understand that God is, that Jesus Christ is your Lord, and you do it because you are created in Jesus Christ. And you are doing it because you want to please the God. You, you want to please God. And, and the God of the Bible says that he, has, he is pleased in Jesus Christ. You and I, when we come to be one with Christ, we do the good works because that's what pleases God. So grace, what grace does in you? Wants to do a new creature. Wants you to do good works to please God, not to please yourself, not, not to please others. So grace does not allow you to sin, it creates something in you. Now, Let's go to the, to the verse 1 here in uh, Ephesians chapter 1. What grace, what grace does in you? And you, have, and you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins in which you once walked according to the course of the world, according to the Prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. So grace, what grace does? By God, by grace, made you alive. When you were dead in sin, walking according the world, but now, because of his grace, you don't do that no more if you have received Jesus Christ. See, you are not it's not giving you the, the, the opportunity to keep on sinning. It says that you have, you have been made different. That's grace. It's not according the world. It's according Jesus Christ. Now, let's go to verse, uh, uh, verse 3. Among who also we all once conducted ourselves in the lost of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the other. And you might be saying this morning, hey, I grew up in church. I have been always in church. But ask yourself, has grace been applied unto you? Just because you were, you were growing up in church doesn't mean 
that, you, that grace has been applied to you, if you keep on living in sin, fulfilling the desires of the flesh. The Bible says, we're by nature children of wrath, just as the others. So this morning, ask yourself, grace, is it working in you? God is, is, is God working in you through his grace? Because if he is, you are battling against your own sins every single day. Verse 4, but God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love with, with, love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. And raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in, in Christ Jesus. See? One in Christ. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards, towards us in Christ Jesus. Verse 11. Therefore, remember that you once Gentiles in the flesh who are called on circumcision by what is called the circumcision made in the flesh by hands, that, that at that time you were without Christ, being aliens, aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenant of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. Now, God wants to create by his grace a new creature in Christ Jesus in you. That's grace. Now, you're going to be saying, okay, I do understand that grace is a gift that I don't deserve. That I cannot do anything to buy it. I cannot do any works to receive it. That's God's mercy. He's by grace letting you know what that sin is going to cause you death. But he doesn't want that for you. He wants to give you eternal life through Jesus Christ. And he's inviting you this morning to receive that grace if you have not received it. Even if you have been in church for all of your life, but you have, but you deep inside of you, you know that you have not received the grace of God. You have not received Jesus Christ. You only were following everyone else. This morning, the grace of God is shining onto you. He's inviting you to receive that grace so you can have eternal life. He does not give you a license to sin. We said that before but it creates a new creature in you. This morning, Brother Nolan helped us to read Titus, and we're going to end up right there with Titus. Let's go, go with me to Titus 2.11. Don't, don't, don't lose uh, Titus. Put, put your hand, put a, put a pen or something there. Put it, put it there. Don't, don't, don't go away from Titus. Don't, don't lose it. Let's go to Hebrews 10.26 before we go to Titus. Hebrews 10.26. Have it there? <coughs> the Bible says, For if we sin willfully, after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains sacrifice for sins, but a certain fearful expectation of judgment and fury and indignation which will devour the adversaries. Anyone who has rejected Moses 
Moses now dies without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. Now let's go to verse 29. It says, of who, how much worse punishment do you suppose will he be through worthy who has trampled the Son of God on their foot? Counted the blood of the covenant by which he has he, he was sacrificed a common thing and insulted the spirit of grace. That's something that we have to read and meditate on it every single day. Yes, he came and died for us. Yes, he, he did the sacrifice for us. Because of his grace, he sent his son to die for you and I. But we cannot keep on continuing, continuing on living a simple life. That's something that you can read later at home and make notes. And it helps us to understand how to live. Now, if we go to Titus, we had it there, Titus 2.11, the Bible says, For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. If you are here this morning, if you know that you are not saved, by the grace of God it has appeared to you. It's, when it says to all men, it doesn't say that every single one is going to be saved, no matter if, you, if they receive him or not. When it says about all men, it's talking about humanity. So it's, it's appearing to you for salvation. It has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness, uh, ungod ungodliness and worldly lust, we shall live soberly, righteously, and godly in the present age, looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ. So grace, what it does, by conclusion, shows you salvation through Jesus Christ to give you the opportunity to receive him so you can, be, so you can have eternal life. And grace teaches you that you cannot keep on sinning like if it was a license to sin, saying, I am covered by the blood of Christ. Have you heard that before? Saying like, oh, I, keep on, I, can't, I can't keep on sinning. A lot of people say that. But it says, teaching us that denying ungodliness, ungodliness, denying it in your life, and denying the lost, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in the present age. And the next verse says, grace. What we have to do by grace? We have to do looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. So what grace does in your life, if you have received it, and if it, if it has been applied unto your life, it causes you to every single day keep on looking for the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. Grace is more than saying, I am saved and that's it. No, there, there's more about it. And you and I have to go and read it and understand it. And if grace has been applied unto your life, I invite you this morning not to please men, but to come to the altar and give thanks to God for his grace. If you do understand his grace, come and give thanks to God for his, for his grace. He's worthy, he's worthy. Give him thanks. It is good to ask him to help you every single day. 
It is good to pray when something is not good in our lives. It is good to come and say, God, please help me. God, I put my burdens in, on your hands. God. But it is better when you come and give, thank, give him thanks for his grace. Listen, if it was not for his grace, you were not going to be able to come and ask him for help. Please, please let me repeat this one. If it was not for his grace, you were not going to be able to come and ask God to help you to be to help you with the problems that, that you have in your life. So if you recognize grace this morning, come and give thanks to God for his grace. He's worthy. Listen, we give him glory by giving him thank you. Thanks. Now, if you come this morning and if you want to ask God for something else that you are battling with in your life, and if you know that grace is not allowing you to sin, but you know that there is, there is sin in your life, you can come to God and say, God, please help me. I do understand that grace is pointing me onto Jesus Christ. Please help me. You can come and, and ask him for help. You cannot do it, you cannot do it by yourself. It's not in your strength. It's in his strength. Give thanks to God. Come and give thanks to God for his grace. And then ask him to help you to live a godly life. Denying the lust of this world. Denying sin in your life. That is grace, brothers and sisters. Come and give him thanks. And now, if you're here this morning, and we keep on mentioning this, if you have not received Jesus Christ in your life as your Lord and Savior, then grace has not been applied to you. And if you want to get, if you want to ask God for his grace to be applied into your life, come and you can ask and we are willing to share with you through the Bible how grace can be applied unto your life. And if you have lived like grace is giving you an opportunity to keep on sinning, repent. Come to God and tell him, I repent. God, I know I understand that grace is not a license to sin. Come, repent. And give him thanks for his, for his grace. Let's pray. Holy Father, we come to you this morning. Brother Cameron, if we, we come to you this morning to ask you, God, to help us. That now that we understand the grace, now that we know that it's not a license to keep on sinning, God, please ask you to, to help us. Give us your strength to walk away from sin. And now that we understand his grace, what you did for us on the cross, we come and give you thanks as a church. We want to give you thank you and to give you thank you and to thank you and to praise you all the time. Thank you, Brother Mary. If you would stand with me, if you would, please. As Heidi comes and the musicians begin to play.